of the week six learning guide for college algebra. We've been making some good progress so far. Now, if you missed part one, check the description below. I have linked it for you so that you can access it so you don't miss any of the topics for this week. Also, if you want a copy, a hard copy of the um, document I'm working from, you definitely can do that. I've got the link below for you. So feel free to grab that and follow along. We are going to get started with some of the topics for this um, week are a little bit difficult, lots of details involved. But before we do that, if this is the first time you're seeing my face, hi, my name's Dr. Marissa May. I'm on a mission to help students and teachers feel confident in their math classes. So I hope you're uh, on board today with that. That's our goal. So let's jump right in. In the first problem, we are looking to find a whole bunch of list of stuff for a particular function that's a fraction. And I know a lot of us, fractions were not our favorite thing in school. That's okay, we can change that today. <laughs> so let's get started. I'm gonna bring over another piece of paper just for more room, uh, because when I write, I wanna have plenty of room to give you the details. So I'm gonna start with the function as is. And I promise I'm gonna make this as simple as possible because I want you to feel, like I said, confident. All right, here's our function. Now, before you do anything, before you're like, oh, how do I do this? How do I do this? I want you to factor this. I want you to get it as factored as possible. I can't do anything with the top, okay? It's pretty, it's simplified as far as it can go, but that bottom, I can actually factor that. So I'm going to factor that. as x minus 2, x minus 3. Okay, I don't want you to mark them out yet. Instead, I want you to write a new function with them canceled out. So you'll notice I labeled this new function y instead of f of x, because it's a little, it's similar, but it's a little different than f of x. And notice these x minus 2s would cancel, but that would leave me a 1 on top and an x minus 3 on the bottom. Now, I call this the simplified function. f of x is the original function. y is the simplified function. So now we're going to look at finding all this list of details and putting it together for a sketch. So the first thing we're looking for is the domain. Okay. The domain comes from the original. Okay. So put yourself a little note domain comes from the original function. And if you saw part one of the week six learning guide, you know we have two rules for domain. Square roots cannot be negative and denominators cannot equal zero. So the only one we're dealing with here is denominators cannot equal zero. So take your denominator, the, the one we factored, and set it equal to cannot equal zero. Friends, super easy when you've already factored it because now you've got x minus two cannot equal zero and you got x minus three cannot equal zero, which means x cannot be two and x cannot be three. That is your domain. Pretty simple, but remember it comes from the original. Okay, intercepts, okay, intercepts come from the simplified function, okay, so it's got to come from the simplified function, and you've got two things to do. The first thing is sub zero for x, so take your simplified function y equals 1 over x minus 3 and put in a 0 for that x right there. That tells you you have a y-intercept of negative 1 third. Okay. Second thing to do, again in the simplified, set the numerator equal to zero. 
So you're going to take your numerator, set it equal to zero, and this is not true, right? One minus one equals zero is not true. That means there's no x intercept. But again, that comes from the simplified function. So the only intercept we have is at zero, negative one third. Okay, then we want to find the vertical asymptote. And again, this one comes from the simplified function. Okay, to get the vertical asymptote, you're going to set denominator equal to zero. So you're going to take the x minus 3 and set it equal to 0. And you can add 3 to both sides. You're going to get that x equals 3 is your vertical asymptote. OK. The last piece we need is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, this one's a little tricky, but again, it comes from the simplified. Okay, you're looking at your highest powers of x, okay? You don't have an x here. You have a high, you have a power of x here. So when the highest power of x is in the denominator, we say that's bottom heavy. Since the denominator has the largest power of x, then that means your horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero. Let me say that again. When your highest power of x is in the denominator, it is bottom heavy. We refer to it as bottom heavy. That means that your y equals zero is going to be your only horizontal asymptote. Okay. I forgot one more. We've got the whole. So the whole. Okay. Remember back when we did the original function, that x minus 2 canceled? That's letting you know there is a whole. Okay. Now, that x minus 2, we set it equal to 0, and we find that x equals 2 is the x coordinate for our whole. But we need the y coordinate also. So now we take this value and we plug it into the simplified function. So y equals 1 over 2 minus 3. So I get that y is negative 1. So that tells me my whole is at 2, negative 1. And we found all of the pieces that we need to draw a sketch, okay? So let's put it together. Now, the first thing I graph when I sketch are those asymptotes. They're the easiest ones to, to um, put on there. We had a vertical at x equals 3. So, friends, I'm just going to move over a distance 3. There is intentionally no grids on this one because it's just a sketch. When I draw asymptotes, I draw them dashed because they're not actually part of the graph. They're just boundaries for the graph. And then I've got my horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. That's the x-axis. After I graph my asymptotes, the next thing I graph are the intercepts that I have. So I had an intercept at 0, negative 1 third. That's down here. After I graph my intercepts, I graph my whole. At 2, negative 1, I draw a hole just like that. And then I know that this graph has to do something like this. See, because I know that graphs get close to their asymptotes, but they don't touch them. And now I know it cannot be in this section because then it wouldn't pass the vertical line test and it wouldn't be a function. So I know it cannot be up here. The other part of the graph either has to be here or here. And most functions, most of these types of functions are opposite each other. So I know this one is here. Okay, 
Now, if you want to put it in Desmos, you definitely could do that and get all your details, make sure, get your sketch, you know. But I think that even Desmos might miss the whole part, okay? So, I, oh, excuse me. I want you to know how to find those pieces for it. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, because I want, I think sometimes we see the second example and it kind of solidifies it for us. Okay. So I'm going to bring over another piece of paper here. Or I just folded it. <laughs> um, let's look at number two. Okay. Remember, we start with the original function and factor what we can. So we're going to factor x squared minus nine. That gives me x plus three, x minus three. Think difference of two squares. And then we factor x squared plus 8x plus 15. Uh, that's x plus 3 and x plus 5. Okay. You know right now, because you can see the canceling is going to happen, you're going to have a hole, right? But let's get that simplified function. That's what we have after that part canceled. Okay. So this is our original function. This is our simplified function. Domain first. Domain is to take your original denominator and set it equal to zero. Or you say that it cannot equal zero. Okay. That means that x can't be negative three and x can't be negative five. That's our domain. Okay. Part two, let's do our intercepts. To find the y-intercept, we substitute 0 for x in the simplified function. Put a 0 in for x. So my y-intercept looks to be negative 3 fifths. So I got 0, negative 3 fifths. My x-intercept comes from setting the numerator of the simplified function equal to 0. So I have an x-intercept at x equals 3. We didn't have one of those before, but we do this time. Okay, next part, vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptote is simplified function. Denominator can uh, equal to 0. So i got x plus 5 equals 0. So I know my vertical asymptote is x equals negative 5. Horizontal asymptote. So notice in this simplified function, your highest power of x is in the top and the bottom. When that happens, you take the two numbers in front of those highest powers and divide them. There's not one written, so it's understood to be a 1 and a 1. So our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 1. Our last detail is our whole. So we take our canceled factor. Remember the x plus 3 canceled? We set that equal to 0. So we know our whole has an x-coordinate of negative 3. Now we have to put it into the simplified function to find the y-coordinate. So I'm going to put negative 3 minus 3. And on the bottom, negative 3 plus 5. Um, let's see, that gives me negative 6 over 2. So my y-value is negative 3. So my whole is at negative 3, 3. Let's put all of this together for a sketch, okay? Start with the asymptotes. Plot your asymptote, your vertical one at negative five. No, I did not count over there. I just moved over, because we're doing a sketch. We don't need to be precise, otherwise I'd have a ruler out, right? Horizontal asymptote at y equals one. Intercepts next. So you've got intercepts at zero, negative three fifths. That's down here. And you've got an x-intercept at three, zero. And then my hole is at negative three, negative three. So it's here. So I know that graphs get closer to their x intercept I'm sorry, to their asymptotes. They kind of trail them. And then I know this one has to be in this section. Now, the one that, reason that it has to be in this section, remember, I didn't have any more intercepts to go that it would run through. So that gives me kind of some ideas as well. All right, friends. Well, I hope this helps with rational functions for the week six 
part of college algebra. If you need some more ha math help or you have other questions for me, feel free to reach out to me at any of my socials there. I would love the opportunity to help. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you get a notification every time a new video is posted. Bye for now.